don't forget keep preparing things are uh, heating up slowly getting worse prices are through the roof so it's never a better time to start a victory garden not only for self reliance but to save yourself money and get as much food as you can now not only for hard times but as an investment you're better having food than cash and collateral at the moment you know me I'm always been uh, quite motivated in, in self-reliance it's not something that has just come about overnight which some of you have been writing in my comments I've always had this mindset you know and some of you have been saying I'm losing my mind losing the plot I'm more switched on than I've ever been and obviously five years of practicing different skills and bits and pieces that's how I wanted to apply myself in the outdoors and rely on things in the outdoors to, to, to help me when things get a bit sticky. I want to talk about a victory garden and what I've done in my small garden <clears throat> to utilize the space in which to grow as many crops as I possibly can under the present climate with things going up and shortages I think it's a great idea to utilize your garden space and start growing as much as you can so we just moved home and we've designed this garden and we've got it up and running so hopefully next year it will start producing some uh, some nice crops and maybe be self-sufficient in one or two crops such as potatoes, tomatoes, onions, things like that. But not only the, the benefit of being self-sufficient, it's just nice growing your own food. You know, the satisfaction of growing something from seed and the flavours and, and all the goodness that comes with that. So at the moment I'm trying to utilize as much space as I've got and obviously next year increase everything and start growing things up vertically and things like that so you can uh, you can maximize your space so we purchased all these raised beds they're about 400 liters and I find it keeps everything contained and easy to get at they're a great working height so you can get to everything in this bed I've got some cherry tomatoes some radish cucumbers and spring onions so I crop rotate in this as the radishes come through I'm replanting and stuff like that but anyone can grow cherry tomato as long as you've got nice rich soil and you keep them well watered and they're so nice much better than the shop bought ones this is my beef steak tomato bed this is my pride and joy really I grew all these from seed and they're producing at the moment a lovely crop and if you never had a beef steak tomato well it's a meal in its own but some of them can get up to 10 ounces in size so I can't wait to start picking them and slicing them up and putting them on a piece of toast that's a meal in itself but it's something nice about growing your own it's it's brilliant this is the first kind of real year in my life that I've grown so many crops I've got around 38 different varieties of fruit and veg in this small garden and I'm hoping to keep it about 38 but obviously improve the yield of everything <coughs> so just come in the garden and get what you need and through the center of my tomato bed I've utilized the space so I'm growing some peas and also carrots so in this bed I've got savoy cabbage for later on in the season and some carrots and in this bed thinking of later on in the season brussels sprouts and beetroot which I love stores really well and it's lovely uh, roasted you can't beat roasted beetroot this is kind of my protein bed runner beans and peas grow all these up here I've got peas in the middle and runner beans on the outside and hopefully they'll all intertwine and we'll have a nice crop but in England at the moment a lot of supermarkets uh, 
because of the, the heat wave, all the fridges and freezers are broken down and people are struggling to get produce. So there's no better time to start a victory garden. You know, a large percentage of population grew a victory garden during the First and Second World War. So I think it's a necessity to start learning to grow your own. You know, it's uh, without food you're nothing, and the joy that you get from it is uh, is beneficial. You know, I've really enjoyed building this garden up. We've only been here six weeks. So next year it should be uh, should be quite an abundant garden. You just go out and just grab your own produce rather than having to struggle down the supermarkets, especially with all the shortages at the moment. And what's next year going to bring? And one of the things that is so easy to grow, and if you had to grow, or if I had to grow one veg it would be potatoes which I've got here they're so easy to grow and I've grown them in 30 litre pots so these are main crop so I'll be harvesting these around sort of August time up up until October but next year I'm gonna have 20 of these pots so that should be enough potatoes to last us through the year for me and Mrs B so 30 litre pots, just put a couple of seed potatoes in and boom, just water them and that's all you do. Obviously, you know, a nice drop of compost in there to start with to get them established. But I'm really pleased with these. I've harvested two buckets of second earlies already and beautiful flavour. Absolutely beautiful, really creamy because the potatoes that you buy you just got to add loads and loads of butter to them to, to give them some flavour. It just tastes like water. But these, gorgeous. Like I said, you don't need a huge amount of space to grow potatoes. People think they need acres and acres. But they're nice and contained in these 30 litre pots. And pound for pound, this is your heavyweight bush bean. Doesn't take up hardly any room. As long as you keep picking, it'll keep producing so that's a great bean to have in your garden we've got a few of them mixed in just a constant supply of beans high in protein and then if you you stockpile some rice and that you can mix that in and you've got yourself a meal so this is going to be my fruit section so that's two variety of pear there and then here i've got a cherry against the wall nice and tight get a maximum crop for the least amount of space. I've got Victoria Plum, so renowned for producing a lot of fruit. But I've got one on there at the moment. It's newly planted, so I'll be savouring that. Strawberries, we've had quite a good crop off of that. Same again, high in vitamin C. Mixed with your food stores, you can even treat yourself to a pudding. Come shear the fan. And over here is my peppers. Got a variety of orange, red, green, and some chilies thrown in. So, a bit of spice. All things nice. But I'm loving these pepper plants. And this was an experiment, and these are coming on really well. But you can't guess what these are, guys. Tobacco. So I thought I'd have a go at growing my own tobacco because I like a, a smoke now and again. So I thought I'd uh, turn my hand, grow them and dry them and see how they come out. So in this raised bed, I've got radishes and one of my favourites, which I can't wait for next year, is asparagus. So I've got two in the pot and one down in that bed. So in this section of the garden, I've got all my berries. So I've got polar berry, raspberry, black currant, and blueberry. So we had a, a small crop this year, but like I said, next year should generate us plenty of berries. And then on our fence line, 
we've got blackberries as well. We're making uh, some jams with that and 100% organic. You just can't beat it. So this is prime example why you should grow your own. I just harvested these from my blackberry bushes. There's around three kilos there. So if you look that up in the UK, what three kilos of blackberry will cost you organic, you'll be shocked. So prime example to grow your own and how fresh are they? Oh. Get growing guys. And you all know me guys, you know I like cooking. In this garden we had to create a cook area. So you can imagine come spring with the fresh asparagus spears thrown onto the barbecue. Gorgeous. So we've had some great cook-ups so far. If you're interested in this, this is a cad eye. It's the smallest barbecue uh, pit they do, but it's phenomenal. The heat that it generates, you only need a few pieces of charcoal. And that's my wood store. Keep all that topped up. I gain all that from the woodland. So I'll chop that up and bring that back home. And then a little outdoor spice rack. When you want to add a bit more spice to them meat dishes. So I hope you like the tour. And um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, then I can show you, you know, what we've done in, in our storage units and the different appliances we're using. Obviously you know I've got loads of power packs so you know I can rely on them if the electricity or the grid was to shut down or power cuts were to come. Later on in the year we're going to have a log cabin and a potting shed put in the garden so that will give us more space and, and more versa versatility for growing things bringing things on earlier in the winter so if you're growing yourself I hope you're having a bumper harvest and you know if you're in England at the moment I hope you're busy watering because I certainly am and it's nice balancing this with my my woods as well so if I have any spare crops or anything I'm maybe planning on doing a few raised beds up there so that I can spread my bets No, it's been uh, it's been a busy six weeks. Hence, haven't put much on for a while. But hopefully, I'll uh, I'll catch up what I've missed. And uh, if you want to see more of me potting around in this garden, you can uh, go over to Patreon and and check that out. I've, I've done a video on there explaining bits and pieces. So, thanks, guys. Enjoy the great outdoors.